All right, so we're back. Look at that. Bud is planting like a boss. <laughs> Do you think this is enough? Or should I just plant the extra I'll four? I'll plant the extra four. Because it's a new variety, at least, I think. Now, what's so cool about seeds is that, you know, yes, a lot of them in the same family where they look the similar, but there's so many different shapes and colors and stuff like this one's really cool this is the ancient watermelon really cool watermelon is it okay if i just rip that open because there's tabs no no there you should be able to open it yeah because yeah. we want to be able to reseal that packet there you go good job bud now let's pour those out because frank says there's different ones i want to see what's in there Ooh. That's interesting. They all look different. They are different. I bet that's a sugar baby. These little ones, or maybe the little ones are sugar baby. These are interesting. Let's do the little ones. Because we got the big, big melon. So put the big ones back. Let's do the little seeds he sent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at this. They look exactly the same. Yeah. Well, do it. yeah. Let's do the little ones. So anyway, the ancient. I got a couple videos on this. Maybe t at least two um, on this melon. Really cool melon. It's got a really cool story. Uh, Baker Creek sells these seeds. And what's cool about it is the, um, it's now a recessive trait. Art Combs actually bred the, tried to breed the trait out initially. He wanted just like the traditional shape watermelons, but the uh, main characteristic, and, and they're trying to bring them back, is that these watermelon, um, they have a handle, almost like a gourd. And they're also really drought, supposedly drought resistant. And apparently they were found, the seeds to these were found in a cave in like a container that was coated with like pine pitch or something. And the seeds, who knows how old they were, but... They still grew? Um, he was able to get them cultivated, like grow them and stuff. And then, you know, anyway, Baker Creek has brought this variety to... You know, someone donated the seeds to them, and they've, they've been cultivating it. And now we're cultivating it. This is our third year growing it. But it's just really cool. Like, all little shapes and sizes of the seeds and stuff. we got little seeds for the cucumbers. The Blue Hubbard. I'm excited about that. That's going to be interesting. These things are going to be monsters. Really? How big were yeah. they? These are melon. They're storage melons, bud. They're melons that can get up to, like, I don't know, I want to say 25, 30 pounds, what? something like that. That would be, like, real, like... They're, they're, they're not melons. They are um, squash. It's a storage squash. And they store a really long time, and they cook up really good. You can make, like, um, basically roast them. There's a guy, what's his name? Um, he's got a YouTube video on that where he lives in, I think, Maine, one of the New England states. Saw oh, that dude. Jay Walker, I think, is his YouTube. And he hasn't put out a video for a really long time, but he's got a video on the Blue Hubbards where it's like middle of winter. There's like several feet of snow on the ground. Hey, Tim, what's up, man? And he's trucking along, and he's got this blue Hubbard he's carrying on his back in the middle of winter. Brings it in his house, cuts it up and all that, and then roasts it. It's, he's, he's made some really cool videos. I don't know why he's not doing any more. Maybe he got burned out on YouTube. Hey, it's all good, man. <laughs> uh, the, the Lord is good, man. tell you a story 
not to get all uh, religious and all that, but I'm going to get religious for a little bit just to share kind of ways in which um, Lord's provided for us over the years and stuff. Like when it was years ago, um, we didn't have hardly anything. I had a couple kids. We were just struggling. And um, anyway... Remember, we needed a uh, a winter coat for my daughter, and my wife saw all upset because we didn't we couldn't go to the store to actually like, get a coat, and so we're you know it's like do we go to Goodwill? What are we gonna do? So anyway, uh, I ended up going to work that day and just kind of prayed about all that. I'm like, man, you know, um, there's a situation. Why do you know? I'm working all I can. As far as overtime and this and the other, I'll make a long story short, I get to work and this gal who had no idea, co-worker of like what our situation was like financially at that time, and this is like I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, says, hey, you know, I was thinking about you this morning, and you know it's winter, and I have this um, my granddaughter's old coat. It's like brand new. Do you want it? <laughs> I was like, well, okay, yeah. So um, she gave me a coat. Well, what was really cool was when I was coming home from work, um, I hadn't gotten home yet because I was working 45 minutes away. I get home and uh, so I tell my wife what happened all that stuff and she's crying and everything and she's like well you're not gonna believe what happened and I was like what's that and she basically went on to tell me that kind of same deal except a uh, random stranger um we didn't know him from Adam or anything um showed up at the house knocked on the door and at first my wife she's like what you know what are you gonna answer the door but the guy was like in a suit and looked like like he looked like he wasn't gonna do anything crazy and all that. So she answers the door and um, he's like, "Yeah, you know, um, I know this is just like totally random and weird, but um, I'm a businessman and I live in Lafayette, Indiana. I work in Greencastle and I make this commute every day and I drive through, um, you know." this town here and I my habit is I pray for people living on this road as I'm going through and she's like what this is crazy and um he's like yeah and I just um I don't know what it was but I just felt compelled that I was supposed to stop here and give you a hundred dollars <laughs> and um it was just you know crazy so I mean we've had I mean, as the Lord, that's what it was. I mean, it wasn't happenstance, right? It wasn't happenstance that, like, two people that had no idea of the situation um, we were in, you know, met a need there. And um, we never saw that guy again. Like, he never stopped by ever again. Um, but I guess the main takeaway is, like, the Lord knows what we need when we need it and he's able to he works in mysterious ways and he can do above and beyond what we can even think or imagine and he has resources we know nothing about and it seems like a lot of times and it's just my personal experience kind of disclaimer here you know i know there's all kinds of people that watch my channel and stuff like that but it seems like my personal experience is that um The Lord is always, um, he wants us to depend on him and he works things in such a way that causes us to um, depend on him, to trust him. Like, he puts us in situations where like there's nothing we can do or, you know, um, like to teach us to trust him and to actually come to him like it says in the scriptures you know to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us and um to rely on him and like it's he's real it's like it's real life 
Like it's day in day out. It's it's gas money. It's uh, winter coats. It's it's food. It's um, you know basic needs, um, things like that. But as like a child of God, as a believer, like He's going to take care of us. Doesn't mean we're not going to suffer or go through things, and doesn't mean that we can't bring consequences on ourselves by like just like being irresponsible or making ignorant decisions and things like that. I mean, we're supposed to exercise wisdom and and all of that, but what we're not supposed to do is like completely depend on ourselves. Like He wants us to depend on Him, and so a lot of times, if um, if we're not depending on Him. Like, he has a way of bringing us back to himself. And uh, that's been my experience over the years and just different things that have happened that have been, you know, like, just, um, it's not pleasant at the time, but you looking back on it, it's like, wow, okay. And then it's like a, you know, something you can remember and like kind of, um, you know, draw on as you're going forward in life and, you know, other stuff's happening. And um, it's just really cool. And so now, you know, on maybe on the other side of that, <laughs> opportunities where, you know, we have opportunity to, um, you know, give or bless other people or whatever. Like, I'm, like, totally thankful for that. One other little story along that line. So... And maybe a lead up, and you know, on all the things that's kind of, or a backstory, and maybe why, at least in my thinking, some of the things have happened the way they have for me. Um, when as a volunteer, you know, youth pastor, a youth worker, I Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, it's it's human, you know, human nature is we want to be self-reliant, you know. Um for the most part, we want to dictate our own course. We want to um I don't know, we want to be, um, we want to be in control. And when things aren't in control, that's, you know, it's uncomfortable, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lifelong lesson. It's not something that I don't think that we ever, we're, we're, there's always room to grow in that area. And, uh, again, it doesn't mean you test the Lord and, like, put yourself in a situation where, like, all right, prove yourself. <laughs> you know, um, again, you act with wisdom and you, you, you try to live a prudent life. And then, you know, the Lord does the teaching as far as, like, circumstances and things like that. Um, again, my experience, right, is things that I've I've observed and um and whatnot and again not that I've I've arrived or that I know all that but just some things that seem to that I've observed over the years it's true for me and true you know it's been my experience and stuff um but one other storyline so when I was in uh college and stuff and doing this um youth pastor deal or you know volunteering at this church and basically had his youth and stuff it seemed like anytime I had um extra resources or um was blessed with something or whatever like there was like an urgent need that like was being put before me to meet and um I remember just kind of resenting that in my my heart like my thought like man you know why is it that every time I've got extra you're calling me to give it away you know or um 
whatnot. I just remember resenting that. And then I remember <laughs> about as quick as that thought was there, you know, there the 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 response was like, oh, so you don't like giving, huh? Okay, well, we can fix that. <laughs> And, um, and then, you know, basically went through a lot of years where we were, we were not the head, we were the tail and we were, um, having to learn to depend and, you know, basically being on the receiving end of, um, a lot of different people and stuff who were gracious, you know, and, um, all that and I just remember like okay you know if ever we get on the other side of that anytime and and it's been true like now anytime there's been an opportunity it's just I'm so thankful like wow like okay um thank the lord <laughs> That's... so anyway um again just Little musings here and there. It's just kind of cool how everything works out. And look, while I was talking, my son finished planting all the seeds. Bless his heart. Look at this. So now the next step. We're going to bottom water this tray. And I just happen to have a gallon of water right here. Look at that. Make sure it's not, uh, yeah. So we just move one of these pots. And we're probably going to have to put these sticks a little further down because what I'm going to do is put a topper on this. Because we want to make this like a little greenhouse where it's, the moisture is going to stay and not escape. Then I'm gonna have to hook up the uh, the grow mat. We'll start out with about a half gallon of water, maybe a little bit more. We'll see what happens. It should lap that up pretty good. And then what we'll do is I'll. Um, I'll spritz these too so everything's nice and moist and then we'll put our clear cover on wherever it's at. I don't know if you were on Frank when we uh, planted these but we chose the small seeds. I was interested. I'm, I'm guessing those are the smaller like um, compact watermelons which I've never grown before. And maybe not. Maybe they're going to end up being huge. But that was just my guess based on the seeds. Oh, I got to put the, the desk and packets in here. He took them out. We'll do that. Yeah, it's kind of cool at work today. Um, work's been kind of... A relatively stressful last couple days a lot of it's because of this COVID-19 stuff and how it's affecting our business and there's just like general tension over things because there's a lot of stuff we're having to like deal with that we haven't had to really worry about before and all that and um so I started the day my coworker just like okay let's start with gratitude like what are you thankful for you know and I was like well I'm thankful that I got a uh, another pair of shoes because <laughs> last night our basement flooded and I ended up having to mess with the sub pump and my shoes that I normally wear to work were soaking wet and so they were able to dry today while I wore an older pair. So what do we plant? That's a good question. So we got the Market Moore 76. We got some uh, zucchini squash, uh, gray. We got black beauty. We did uh, the Boston pickling cucumber. I had seeds. 
We brought some stuff out of the archive. I got straight eight cucumbers, which that's an awesome cucumber, routinely like eight inches long, really uniform. These things were monsters. And my buddy, he's going to love that because uh, he's coming to help me this weekend. I'll have to tell him the story on these because I saved seeds. These are the... So he gave me the seeds for this variety. We grew them a couple years in a row, and then these are the last ones I saved from the garden we had before we moved. So um, I'm hoping they're still good because we, we started some. Uh, my son wanted to do Tigger Melon, so we're trying that. I think the younger kids are going to love that. I did the Ancient Watermelon again. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out if it was a Charleston Gray or not. We did Crickneck Squash. I did uh, Blue Hubbard. We're going to try that again. And then we picked the uh, the smaller seeds that were in here. And again, I don't know exactly what variety that was. Maybe you had two different varieties, Charleston Gray and an, another one. But, um, and look at that. That water is gone. I'll put over a half gallon in there. And the pots are noticeably heavier, but as you can kind of see, they, they sopped up a fair amount. So let's put the rest in there. We'll see what happens with that. He didn't put a lot of uh, potting soil on there. So yeah, within a few days, I mean, all that stuff should be um, popping up, and then probably in about a week, we'll be ready to to transplant in two weeks be ready to put it out in the garden maybe by next week I don't know it just depends how quickly everything grows they typically grow really quick so then now we got uh, pumpkins to start and I could show you the I think you got on right when I was uh, here here's our rugs that are drying right now I had to bring all these plants in because we got so much rain. It was so crazy. I was chatting with Tom because, you know, he lives in in uh, the city here too. And um, to pull on my neighborhood, there's a road I turn off of and there was water up to my car door where it's kind of at the bottom where the roads intersect and there's all this water rushing down. I guess there was like a fire truck, um, a neighborhood over, probably about two blocks away that got stuck. That it was actually called to help get a woman out of a car that was um, kind of stuck. It was just crazy. I didn't, I've not seen that much rain since we've lived here. And it just, torrential downpour, and then it rained pretty steady throughout the night. Um, off and on, well, I guess off and on, and then today it rained pretty much most of the day, but steady and the sub pump was working, so it didn't flood the basement again. Crazy. Yeah, we were guessing it's probably the um, sugar baby. Let's see if if he labeled. Yeah, he put it as random. So there's one of them. I 
I don't know how many seeds he planted. I should have been paying attention. But now we need to, uh, at some point, spritz these, and then we'll we'll pack the rest of this stuff up. And then I still have uh, pumpkins that we need to start later on. I'll probably do them like next month depending on um, how things go. Let's pull the uh, tripod out. Well, so what else is going on, man? It's been a little while since we caught up. So we can get this tripod up. This tripod is decent. I got it, I think, five bucks at a yard sale. Extend out. Well, oh, I see seeds on the floor. Like my son wasn't real careful getting things potted up. That's better. We do have a, a few more things that I need to plant too. I've got um, two Bountiful Harvest grow boxes that I'm going to set up this weekend. I've got, um, bought some flag of moss, some play sand, and I've got potty mix, but I'm going to set up some, uh, some pots outside on the back deck to do, um, cherry tomatoes. Yeah, the pumpkins are going to be pretty neat. I'm going to have to hit my sister up about space. She's got part of the garden that's allocated, you know, that we sectioned off. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll start up sooner, uh, depending on the weather. I know we're just now getting to the point where we're not getting frost. I mean, as of last week, we were still getting... Um, Frost. In fact, I think it was down in like the 30s last week. Early last week, we had uh, three days in a row where it got real cold. Um, but now it's like 50s, 60s. Oh.
Yeah, that's tough. I know I... We probably need a new garage door at some point. Uh, there's a list of projects here. We got... we. The house is going to need a new roof at some point. Uh, it's going to need new gutters. And so uh, Years ago, uh, my in-laws, they got the gutter guards installed. And whoever did it, did them wrong to where they actually sit above the... Slightly above that roof line like they jammed them in. And so water, instead of water shedding straight off, it actually sits a little bit. And then it drips through the metal soffit. And... Um, you know, where not all of it's going in the gutter and stuff like that. So there was all this kind of mildew on there. Um, it was kind of cool this weekend. I was pressure washing, getting ready to pressure wash the house. Got a ladder out where I was going to get up there and do everything. And the neighbor across the street, who I haven't, I don't really know. Um, this is probably the second time. We've chatted, but he happened to be outside. He saw what I was doing, and he ran over real quick and said, Hey, don't do that. Get off that ladder. I'll, I got a tool that will really help. I'll bring it over. So he um, brought over. It was like a a wand that he got off Amazon for, I think, 100 bucks. that extended out like 18, 20 feet and had the, um, you know, you put your pressure washer attachments on the end of it thing was like a big gun but I was able to stand on the ground then and my arms are a little sore from rustling that thing around but I was able to get everything from the ground and redid all those um, things maybe with a lot of projects around here think about that your boss's company you guys do like general construction or is it just strictly garage doors Yeah, I'll show you. Um, oh, it did just garage doors. Look at this. So the water's made its way all the way to the top. Isn't that cool? The capillary action, there's still a little water in there, so they may take care of themselves and I won't have to spritz them at all. Well, I mean, there's, there's some advantages to being specialized, I guess. You know, you can be, like, real efficient at doing jobs and stuff like that. Here's that wand thing I was telling you about. It's got the attachment, and it's got two places you can unscrew where that thing will extend out. And it basically extends out. Oh, I got you, dude. Well, hey, man. Have a great evening. Enjoy uh, time with your son and all that. And um, we'll catch up again soon. How about that?
All right, man. Well, hey, have a great evening. We'll catch you later, Frank. So, it'll be interesting to see if our um, seeds from 2014 will sprout. Amber Rose, what you doing, child? Getting the paint. We're, Get, we're working. What you doing? We're working on some home projects, so I'm getting tape to tape the hallway so we can uh, paint it. So. Oh. Well, that's <laughs> cool. See, it's just been kind of neat now that the kids are older. They can actually do some of the honeydew projects that I used to be tasked with, like painting. And they actually enjoy it. That's, that's, I mean, that's like a win-win. You actually what? You actually enjoy it. Oh, yeah, So, um, we got most everything planted for tonight. You know where this part is? Why? Because I need to use the mouse for testing. This is not a mouse. This is no, an HDMI. No, I need to use the mouse. That can, connects the mouse to the computer. No, this doesn't connect the mouse to the computer. I'll, I'll come up there, bud. All right, so um, I know this, we've been all over the place in, the, in this second part of the video of starting cucumbers and melons. But the key things are um, they don't take very long to sprout. If you know, plant them right and they've got the moisture and all that, probably within a couple of days they'll, they'll pop up. Within a week they're going to have their leaves and stuff and then harden them off. I'll be able to plant them out in the garden. Um, we've got our pots, which they are still soaking up water. But I can show you that real quick again. So everything's labeled. The uh, bottom water's watering's working. Um, which is a good thing. So we'll put the clear top on, we'll be good to go. And then we'll pack up the seeds for evening for storage. And then we'll be upstairs doing some other things tonight. Anyway guys, that's it for now. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye.